streets, I was in elementary school. I think I was about the fourth grade. There was a high school boy who was standing in the middle of the street saying, you're not walking down this street, this is my street. And I remember the top of my head came to his belt buckle. And I remember I wasn't stupid. <laughs> and I looked up at him and I thought, oh, I can't whip him. And I, his legs were as tall as I was, and I thought, there ain't no way I'm going to outrun him. <laughs> and so I'm just in for a beating today. And uh, my friend was there by me going, I can take him, I can take him, let me take him, Edward, I can take him, I can take him. I'm like, what's holding you back? It's not like I'm holding your arm here. If you want him, go. That'll give me a chance to get away, right? I mean, and I remember the frustration and the anger I felt that day because I felt totally helpless and powerless. There wasn't even anything to pick up. And I remember wishing I had a big brother. And that's what Satan did to me. He was that giant. No matter how hard I tried to get free, he had me whipped. I couldn't outrun him. Some of you may have addictions and you've been trying to outrun them. You can't outrun them. I was in jail in Austin with a guy that came from New York trying to outrun drugs. He'd been in Austin one night. Went to an AA meeting, hooked up, and he was in jail the next day sobering up. You can't outrun them. And you can't lick them on your own. And I remember the Lord one day gave me a vision and I was back on that street and it was the devil and he was standing right in front of me and I felt that same frustration, that anger, that... And I remember I looked down and next to me there was a sword and the sword went all the way across the street. It was huge. It was two or three times as big as I am. And I thought, hmm, that'd do it if I could pick it up. I remember feeling like I wanted a big brother and I remember all of a sudden I felt like big brother stepped up behind me and his name was Jesus. But he didn't, he didn't step in front of me and take on Satan. What he did was he stepped inside of me. And then he said, now son, pick up the sword. And I picked up the sword and I threw it up in the air a couple of times and I caught it and it was light as a feather and I went, oh boy. <laughs> We're going to have fun now. And I turned around and all I could see was the back end of Satan booking it as far as he could down that street. And God said, son, that's how you fight. Me and you with my word. My word under the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit will whip Satan every day. But you by yourself are powerless. You're like a fourth grader facing a twelfth grader. There's nothing you can do. But you and me with my word We'll run him, and I'm not going to fight him for you. You're going to have to fight him in my strength. Years later, I now work at a mission, a homeless shelter in Houston, and all of the principles that I've taught you have come into play. I have had staff physically assaulted. I've had eight staff members miss work with their injuries. I've been spit on and kicked, and I've had numerous people tell me that they were going to kill me and cut me up, and and do all kinds of things like that through the years. Um, and I've learned the principle of let God be my defense. It's a hands-off policy at that place. We don't carry guns, but we deal with people that the law are afraid to deal with. But we take the Word of God under the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit into a very dark place, and the light shines, and people see the love of God. And I used to think, oh, they'll think I'm weak if I just stand here. God told, didn't tell me to run. He just told me to turn the other cheek. But I have found that when I stand in the love of Christ and just say, God loves you, and God wants to save you, that He can do more in five minutes than I can do in a lifetime, and the walls start falling down. And He saves people. And I've seen time and time again where He protects but he's never promised that we're not going to get hurt in the fight. And he's never promised that we're not going to die. In fact, he said, if you're going to follow me, take up your cross and follow me. I found myself one night working in the mission will wear you out. Working with the hurting and the lost and the dark. Dealing with the things that you deal with, the conversations we have every day are about the darkest things that people do in this world. You get tired of the filth, the, the perversion of sin. 
the destruction of sin in people's lives. But you also see God move in miraculous and wonderful and powerful ways and, and change and transform lives, and you see His grace continually. And I found myself one day in church just tired. And as the preacher was preaching, all of a sudden I wasn't there anymore. God took me into another vision and I was on a battlefield. And I looked to my left and as far as I could see, there were just the dying and the wounded and the dead. And maybe way off thousands of miles away, there was not thousands of miles, but way off in the distance, I could see one, maybe two soldiers still standing. And I looked to my right and I saw the same thing. It, just bodies littered the battlefield and, and I saw one or two left standing, not very many. And then I heard a noise and I looked up and there was a hill in front of me and on the top of this hill the enemy was gathering and the enemy was basically just a bunch of demons. And they were jumping up and down and they were screaming and they were chanting and they were working themselves into a frenzy. You know how people do before they get into a big fight. They have to, they have to work themselves up and that's what they were doing and they were chanting and they were screaming and I knew that they were screaming for my blood. And they were excited because they didn't think there was much fight left and they were about to win. And I remember I looked up at them and I wasn't afraid, but I was just so tired. I thought, I just don't know if I can fight anymore. I'm so tired. And then all of a sudden I felt something rising from inside me. I believe it was uh, C.T. Studd or C.S. Lewis, one of those guys that called it the bravado of the Holy Spirit. And he just rose within me, and as he rose within me, I felt strength in my, in my body again. And I picked up that sword again, and I thought, well, I don't know if I'm going to live or if I'm going to die, and it really doesn't matter. But I know one thing. I'm not going quietly. They can come, and they might end up getting me, but it's going to cost them dearly. Now, what's all that about? Paul said, I have one, one desire. I had all that worldly fame and fortune and all that kind of stuff. I don't need that. I have one desire. And when God freed me at the age of 23, when He set me free from my sin, and when He called me into His service, He gave me this verse. And I've made this my life verse, that I might know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His suffering, being made conformable to His death. The power of His resurrection, you can't know resurrection power if you're not willing to die. You have to die before you can get resurrected. I had to die to my life. I had to give it all to God and say, it's all yours. Do whatever you want to with me. I'll go wherever you send me. I'll do whatever you ask me to do. It's not my life as far as I'm concerned. I'm already a dead man. And this life is yours, not mine. I don't have any rights. Whatever you want. The fellowship of His suffering. You follow Jesus you're going to go places that most people aren't willing to go. People told me when I went to work at a mission, I couldn't do that. It would be so depressing. It is. It's depressing. And I have struggled with depression to the point where I have despaired of life and wanted to go home so bad. Because heaven's so real to me. And I just wanted to go home because I was so tired. Tired of watching people just destroy each other with sin. Tired of the struggle. But God said, you know what, I'm not through with you yet. You can't come home. A quitter. You have to finish the race I set before you, right? Do I always go through life laughing? No, I really don't have that reputation. I've done a lot of weeping in my life. Been to jail in obedience to Christ. 
saw God do so.